We're so glad to have you this morning, especially those here live and in person. Praise the Lord. We're glad you're here. We also are appreciative of those who are joining us online, whether it's through Facebook or YouTube. We're glad to have you worshiping to get together with us. Praise the Lord. And outside, it looks like there's just a little bit of uh, rain coming down. And Brother Steve's man in the door, he said it's going to rain for the next few days. So it's like, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Send it down, Lord. Send down that the precious rain that comes from above. Well, I have a great scripture to share this morning. It comes from Psalm 46, verse 4. It says this, God has a constantly flowing river whose sparkling streams bring joy and delight to his people. His river flows right through the city of God most high into his holy dwelling place. Amen. Think about that. The river of God flows right into his dwelling place. And so we want to jump right in that river of worship this morning. Join us today as we worship and as we lift up the Lord. Hallelujah. Sing it out.
<laughs> I, was, I was so in moving to the left, to the left, and the right, to the right. I'm thinking about that. I didn't even look up to see if she's done yet. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. We're going to cry out. Deep That's cries right. out. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Blessed. And this week I was listening to a devotional and I'd love to comment to that uh, Dutch Sheets made. He was talking about the sisters, Mary and Martha, and about how Martha had said, Jesus, come on, make Mary help me. And he was saying that, Jesus was saying, she's picked the better thing. And I loved the comment that Dutch Sheets made about it. He said, Mary responded to the presence of God, whereas Martha responded to the pressure and the performance that she thought was all about God. But how many know that it was Mary that understood relationship, right? And that's what we need to get free from all the busyness that would keep us from sitting at his feet, loving on him and worshiping him.
and ask the Lord to fill this place this morning. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Show us your glory, Lord. How we need your river. How we need your grace, oh God. How we need you, Lord, to rain down on us today. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Oh, we need the river, almighty God, to flow in us today. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your praise this morning. Let's worship to the Lord. Tell him how much you want him to flow in you today. How much you want his spirit to flow in you. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we lift you up today. Lord, we hunger, we thirst for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we need, Lord, the river of God. We need you to flow, Lord Jesus, how we need the river. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, glory to your name, oh, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Oh, come on, how many want God just to rain down his glory in this house? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we give you praise today, Lord. You are the river. You are the river I cause to flow. Thank you, Jesus. And desperate place. You are the river, and out of this river that I put in you, that flows out of you, many will be refreshed, many will grow, many will grow, much will grow, for the desert will bloom because you are the river. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's lift up our hands to the Lord and just receive that right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, let your spirit flow, Lord. Let your spirit flow, almighty God, in this house. Lord, I've been praying all week. God, let your spirit flow in us. Lord, let your spirit flow in your people today, almighty God, mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Ah, we worship you today. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just worship him right now. Just lift up your own song to the Lord. Come on, lift it up to the Lord. Just fill this house this morning with worship unto the Lord. Come on, hallelujah. Lift up your voice and just worship him today. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Don't let anything stop you today from receiving what the Lord would have for you. Don't worry about who's around you. Don't worry about who's here. Just lift up those hands and begin to worship him like you're the only one. You're the only one and you're in his presence. And you're going to worship him. You're going to magnify him. You're going to let him pour into you today. Oh, let him pour into you today. Oh, let him pour into you today. Hallelujah. Let him pour into you today, oh mighty God. Come on, just 
receive of the Lord today. Oh, thank you, Lord. Don't miss out on what God would do in you. Don't miss out, even those of you watching, don't miss what God would do in you right now. Oh, by the Spirit of the living God, hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Come on, fill this house with worship to the Lord. Don't be ashamed. Lift your voice. Don't be timid. Lift your voice. What do you think heaven is going to be? It's going to be an eternity of giving glory, saying, holy is the Lord, mighty is our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want to worship you, Lord. We want to worship you, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, let the river flow, God, in this house. The river of life, oh, God. The river of life. The river of anointing, the river of the Spirit, oh God. The river of healing, oh God, let it flow in this house. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. We will worship you. We will magnify you. Come on, don't let anything of this world to keep you from entering in today. Not the things that happened this last week. Not the things you got to do this next week. Shut it all out and just worship Him right now. Worship Him. Tell Him how mighty and great He is. His majesty. Worship His majesty. Oh, unto Jesus be all glory and honor and praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, we worship you. Glory to your name, oh God. Come on, the Lord wants to speak to us today. He's already spoken to us, but God has a word for us. Let's prepare ourselves to receive the word of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Well, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Mighty is our Lord. We worship you. Oh, thank you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being in this house. Thank you, Lord, for being in this house. Oh, mighty God, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. How many know the Lord is here to meet with us today, anew and fresh? How many want that today? Come on. How many want that today? Thank you, Lord. Just lift those hands and say, Lord, I'm ready to receive today. Come on. I'm ready to receive today, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm ready to receive. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, I'm ready to receive today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It says, my time is short and I'm coming. Yes, he is. And he says, to let your light shine that none of his children should perish, but be with him. Thank you, Jesus. And he says... Pray for the safety of Israel. They are his children. And he loves you. Amen. 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 Paul, lead us in prayer for Israel, will you? Lord, we just come right now to pray over this nation. Yes, Lord. Lord, that's under attack from every side. And we yes, just God. Pray your divine people. protection, Lord. We pray your that you'll people, send Lord. angels round about them to protect them, to be a shield over them. Lord, we just pray for this nation Thank of our you, friends, yes, our Lord. allies. Our yes, companions, Lord. Lord, and so many things. And Lord, we just pray for them. We pray for a fresh anointing. Lord, we pray for fresh revelation. We pray, speak into their hearts and into their lives, Lord. That open their eyes yes, and understanding Lord. that they will see Jesus clearly. 
Oh, Lord, that each one of them will know you and serve you. But, Lord, yes, we Lord. pray for an overarching protection over yes, this nation, Lord. Lord. Lord, we pray greater than the Iron Dome. Lord, let the hand of God be over yes. them to protect and to preserve them yes, Lord. for your purposes, Lord. You have purposes for this nation. And, God, we pray that yes, they will Lord. be protected, preserved, Lord, for your purpose, that your complete work will be done in that nation and yes, through Lord. that people. And, Lord, that you will be glorified in them. And we just pray it today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give God thanks for that right now. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We'll remain standing today and take your Bibles and turn with me uh, again to John 7, 38. I want to go back there this morning. John chapter 7 and verse 38. How many are glad today for the presence of the Lord? How many are glad that God's in the house? Come on, God's in the house. Hallelujah. Again, we're going to continue today. Uh, it's the same scripture I read a couple weeks ago. It says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of of living water. Hallelujah. And Psalm 65 and verse 9 says, the river of God is full of water. Come on, would you say that? The river of God is full of water. Come on, say it again. The river of God is full of water. Can you give him praise for that today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah again. I want to continue talking about contending for the anointing through the authority of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, today for your word. Oh, we thank you for your word. The word that was made flesh. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you today. And Lord, I pray this morning that, Lord, that you will give us as your people ears to hear what the Spirit would have to say. Lord, just anoint your people today to receive your word. Anoint me, O oh God, to be able to declare that word in spirit and in truth. Oh God, may it pierce our hearts. May it not return void. But, oh God, may it accomplish in each of us today, not only here in this building, but those watching, wherever they may be watching, may your word accomplish in them what you would have it to accomplish. We declare it today in our lives and over this house. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Come on one more time. The river of God is full of water. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. 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 Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, two weeks ago, we talked about the three tabernacles that were made by man. Talked about Moses' tabernacle there in the wilderness. We talked about David's tabernacle. And then we talked about Solomon building the temple or the tabernacle. But we didn't have time to go into the tabernacles that were established by God himself, made by God. But I did try to salt your oats. Now you may say, what exactly is that? That's why we're here. That's why we're here. You see, when you can't get a horse to drink the water, you put salt in their oats so they get thirsty and they want to drink. And no, I'm not calling you a bunch of horses. <laughs> it's an expression. My hope was that you would get thirsty for the word. As I told you at the end of the message that I was I was going to share about a tabernacle that was made by God that most have never seen in Scripture, including myself. But I do hope you came thirsty today for the living Word of God. 
Amen. Now, if you remember when I began talking about the tabernacles that were made by man and then those put in place by God, I said that there was one distinct difference, very important difference, between the two tabernacles. In man's tabernacle, which was made by man, of course, under the direction of God, but in man's tabernacle, there was the laver. You remember? I explained it like a, almost like a bird bath, give you a visual. There was a laver where the priest would wash before going into the holy place. All it was was a basin of water. I don't even care about Solomon's. It was 6,000 gallons. It was much more than a bird bath. But it doesn't matter. It was, it was still basically a still water basin of water. The difference in the tabernacles that God creates, there's always a river flowing out of that tabernacle. Come on, the river of God is full of water. Woo, hallelujah. In Revelation 21, 3, it says, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. I say again, beloved, how many know that God wants to dwell with us? Amen. That's always been the great desire of God's heart is that there would be a people who would hunger and thirst, who would have a passion to be in relationship with their God, to know him and to serve him with all of their body, mind, soul, and spirit. Come on, how many want to be that people today? Amen. Hallelujah. Revelation 22 and verse 1 says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, proceeding or flowing out from the throne, the tabernacle of God and of the Lamb. You see, this river comes out from the throne. It's the place where God dwells. The tabernacle of God, you see, is full of life, bringing health and healing to the nations through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But then we look at Ezekiel 47, where Ezekiel has this incredible vision, again, of the power of God. The river of his anointing that was flowing from the temple, the tabernacle of God, and it was flowing towards the east. Remember, all the tabernacles face the east. And so it was flowing toward the east, and with every measurement, a thousand cubits, the river became stronger and stronger. Now, it was first, it says, it was water up to my ankles. As I was thinking about that, I believe what you have here with every measurement is a revelation of the stages in people's lives and reveals their level of passion to go deeper or not in the things of the Spirit. You see... All some folks want to do is dabble in a place they feel is totally safe and a place where there's no way that they're going to lose control. But they can kind of splash around in ankle deep water, if you will, and sort of be refreshed in the Lord. But oh, no further. He measures a thousand cubits. Then the flow of the water came up to my knees. Now these folks are a little braver. They definitely want the move of God. But they still want to feel that they have a level of control. And that they can still get out of the water. They can make a quick exit if there's any threat. 
of the water rising. Oh, did you hear that? Oh boy, somebody spoke in tongues. That may be a little bit, a little bit too much. Maybe time to get out. Then there's those who go in where the water, it says, come up to the waist. Now these are ones that, that want more of God, but they're just not willing to make the commitment of laying down their lives in total surrender that they might gain all of Christ. And they live in a constant state of half in and half out never really coming to that experience of fullness in Christ and the anointing of His Spirit. But listen, have you ever, and I know you have, have you been at the beach or maybe the lake, a lake somewhere, and, and you may be sitting around just talking with people, all of a sudden you hear this, ah! And you look and here comes this person and they're running as fast as they can toward the water and they get right near the water, maybe five feet from the water and they do this dramatic dive into the, into the water. Come on, that's what I believe God wants us to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God wants us to abandon all of our fears. He wants us to let go of all of our control and dive into the river of His Holy Spirit where we are submerged in the life, the power, and the supernatural anointing that produces life wherever it flows. Hallelujah. Verse 9 of Ezekiel 47 says, Wherever the rivers go, will live for they will be healed and everything will live wherever the river goes. Hallelujah. Listen, beloved, God's talking about that river flowing out of you through the anointing and authority of His Holy Spirit. Come on, how many want that today? Come on, it was the river of God that was flowing in and through that brother that brought life and healing to that young lady who was going to China. I believe it was a river of God flowing out of that brother. When he talked to the lady at the deli and her daughter came to the Lord, come on, that river swept over them and brought healing to their lives and their relationship. Come on, folks, the river of God today is waters to swim in. Hallelujah. Swim in today because his river is full of life-giving, life-transforming anointing today that will flow through those who know their God. Hallelujah. And I want you to listen very carefully this morning because I believe this is a real word of the Lord. Listen, God doesn't want us to settle for just having a labor to it, uh, just a labor in our midst. It's just stationary water that if left to itself, it becomes stale and stagnant. Come on, how many believe today he's saying there is a river that flows from God? Come on that flows out of the tabernacle of his presence that will never, ever run dry. Can somebody in the house give praise to God for that today? Amen. Hallelujah. There is a river today that flows from God. Isaiah 33 and verse 20. Look upon Zion. Zion has always been the dwelling place of God. Look upon Zion, a tabernacle that will not be taken down. Not one of its stakes will ever be removed, nor any of its cords broken. Here it is. But there the majestic Lord will be for us a place of broad rivers. Hallelujah. Come on. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for this house. I'm ready for family life to be a place of broad rivers. Hallelujah. Flowing out of this sanctuary with the supernatural life-transforming power of His anointing, bringing healing and salvation to everybody here in this city. Come on, how about you today? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'd like to talk with you about what was the very first tabernacle that was created by God that most, including myself, have never seen. 
And it was in the Garden of Eden. The first tabernacle was in the Garden of Eden. There was a brother in 1841 that was given a revelation about this tabernacle in the Garden of Eden, and his name was Robert Govett. Now, I know that name may not mean because I hadn't heard of it either. But to just give you an idea who he was, Charles Spurgeon, who has been known for the last couple hundred years, basically, he's been hailed as one of the greatest preachers, not the greatest preacher of all time. He was a prince of preachers. He said that there's going to come a day when Robert Govett's writings will be worth their weight in gold. Charles Spurgeon said that about him. I recently got his commentary on Isaiah, actually, looking forward to getting his commentary on Hebrews. But here it is. Genesis 2 and verse 8 says, The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Now that word planted is a very, very interesting word and it literally means to plant. Now, you can see this is not, it's not just made up in Wilson's Word Study, still available, you can get it and you can study it for yourself. Go ahead and study it out. But the word planted, again, means to plant and it means to drive in a nail to pitch or erect a tent. And it comes from the root word to drive in tent pegs. All that from the word planted. So then God in Eden began to drive in tent pegs and the word garden, it means a fenced in place, an enclosure to cover or to build a fence. So then God drove in tent pegs and enclosed an area and it was there in the garden, in that garden, where he would dwell in that tabernacle and Adam and Eve had access to God and it said he would come down in the cool of the day and would have fellowship and he would talk with Adam. Hallelujah. Come on, is that awesome? Wow. But we know, we know what happened. Don't we? Man sinned and he was driven out of the garden again because sin cannot dwell. God and sin cannot dwell together. Now I know I say this a lot because I believe it. Not just to say it. But I want to at this point just say to you that next Sunday I'm going to talk about the all-consuming fire of God. Again, I, I know I say, well, I feel like that God has given me one of the most crucial words. I've said that before because I believe that. And I believe that God has given me a word for the church again about the all-consuming fire of God. Because God and sin cannot dwell together. I hope that you'll tell someone. I hope those of you watching will tell someone. I hope all of you will tell one's pastor's going to be preaching a message on the all-consuming fire of God. I pray that you will share that with someone. But God and sin cannot dwell together. And so man was driven out of that tabernacle. He was driven out of the garden. And the, again, the, the entrance to the garden was facing the east. And Adam was driven out. And what did God do there at the entrance? He stationed a cherubim with a flaming sword to keep man out. Actually, Govett says that the flaming sword is a type of the brazen altar where sacrifice had to be made, the shedding of blood in order to once again for man to be allowed access to God. Actually, some of the commentators believe that's where Cain and Abel brought their sacrifices. They're at the entrance of 
the garden. But John chapter 1 and verse 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt or tabernacled among us. Who am I talking about? Come on. Jesus Christ. Come on. Jesus Christ, He was the fulfillment of all the types and the symbols of the tabernacle. Come on, He was the high priest. He was the sin offering. He was our peace offering. He was the veil that was rent in two. And Jesus said everything that Moses says and spoke about the tabernacle in the wilderness, Jesus said he was speaking about me. You say, well, where I never saw, I never saw where Moses spoke about Jesus. How many know it was all in types and symbolism? But you see, John, he had the revelation of it when he said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. You see, John by revelation knew that Jesus was the sacrifice for all of man's sin. Come on, Jesus was the tabernacle that dwelt among us. Hallelujah. Now, Luke chapter 3 and verse 21 says, When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus was also baptized. While he prayed, the heavens was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended. Now what is the Holy Spirit? It represents the anointing. The Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. Well, what did Jesus say about baptism? See, John said, no, I, I, don't, I can't baptize. You need to baptize me. Jesus said, I need to fulfill all righteousness. How many understand that Jesus was not being baptized as a confession of his sin because Jesus had no sin? He said it was to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, he was saying it is the right thing to do. And remember, what was the requirement of the priest? He had to be washed before he could be anointed. So then Jesus here, he is the tabernacle He's our great high priest, and he had to be washed. He had to be baptized in water before the anointing of the Spirit of God came upon him. Now, you remember what God said about the tabernacle in the wilderness after it was all completed. He said it had to be anointed before it could function and be what it was meant to be. Listen, at the very moment that the Spirit of God came upon Christ, the anointing was poured out on his life, is the very moment that his ministry began. Hallelujah. The moment Jesus, the tabernacle, that dwelt among us was anointed, his ministry began. Now here's an important truth today for each of us to get a hold of in Acts 17, 24. It says, God, who made the world and everything in it, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Come on, beloved. How many know when you come, when we come to the new covenant, God is no longer interested in buildings made with hands? I love this building that God has provided for us. And I thank him every day for it. But come on, how many know this is not the temple of God? Come on, beloved, you and I are the temple. You and I are the tabernacle of the Almighty God and the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, that the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit? Colossians 1, 20 says, 1, says, this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ. In you, the hope of glory. Come on, people of God. This temple, this tabernacle, Almighty God dwells in. Come on, hallelujah. God dwells in us. You, beloved, are the house of God. You are Zion. You are the dwelling place of God. Oh, what an incredible revelation to us that we are the house of God. And how many know today God's not afar off somewhere? He dwells in you and me. 
Yes, it was a mystery. But Christ has revealed the revelation of that mystery. It's Christ in you and it's Christ in me. Hallelujah. Which brings us to the very text that we began this message with two weeks ago. It believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly will flow what? Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Come on, beloved. We are today, we are the temple, we are the tabernacle of God. And again, every temple and every tabernacle that God makes, there is a river flowing out of it. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, and I'll tell you something, that word belly there, says out of your belly, in Greek is translated womb. Now, I think that, I guess, that the translators, the King James translators, may have thought that it was a, it was a gender-specific word, womb, as men don't have wombs, only women. So they made it more generic. And so they said, out of your belly shall flow rivers. But listen, there's a tremendous truth here today we can't miss. Think about it, beloved. What is the function of the womb? It is where birth comes forth. It is where life comes forth. And Christ is in essence saying, until there is that anointing, that we again, we've talked about for weeks now, that anointing that we have to strive for, that we've got to fight for, we've got to contend for, until that anointing is produced in our lives through our total dependence on Christ, through our intimate relationship with God and our hunger and our thirst to know him, without that anointing, our lives will be barren and there will be no life that flows out of them. Instead of a river of God's life, instead of his anointing flowing out of us, producing healing and blessing and power. We will just be a dry riverbed where no life is able to exist. Come on, how many believe today that this river needs to be flowing out of you? The river of God. He said, living water. You Out of your belly, out of your womb will flow life. Out of your womb will flow health and healing and blessing. Come on, everywhere we go, we're the tabernacle where the river of God needs to be flowing out. Come on, how many need, how many believe this culture needs somebody that can flow into their lives and bring healing to their lives? That's what we are called. We're that tabernacle where the river of life is to flow out. Man, I thought about how many Christians right now, I mean even right now today, that sit in churches where they've just, they become content to have the labor. Again, representing the, the efforts of man, where the water has become stagnant and stale and there's no fresh life. Beloved, we are barren until the Spirit of God is released in us through all the fullness of His life and His anointing power. Oh, praise God. I pray you get a revelation of that. You are the tabernacle today. I want to, I want to just close by saying this. Come on, people of God. There should be a river of life flowing out of us. Come on. There should be a river of life flowing out of us. Come on, there needs to be a river of anointing pouring out of our lives that releases the power of God's Holy Spirit in us and in the lives of those that we are around us. Listen, Christ, He was the tabernacle that dwelt among us. Oh, today He is the tabernacle that dwells in us. Hallelujah. Come on, He is the tabernacle that dwells in us. If we are drinking from the living water that flows from the very presence of Almighty God. As I said in Ezekiel 47, 9, everywhere, the river when it produced life. 
Come on, how many want a passion today? To be in a place that wherever you go, the river of God is flowing out of you. Come on, bringing healing and restoration and an anointing that destroys all the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, friends. We're not just to be, uh, just to be, oh, I'm a Christian. No, we're a tabernacle where the Spirit of God wants to flow out of us to bring healing to a lost and a dying world today. Oh, I wish and I pray that we get the revelation of that, of what we are supposed to be, who we are in Christ. That we are that tabernacle where Jesus said, if you'll drink of my presence, there will flow out of your life such an anointing. Oh, that will destroy those burdens and those yokes. Oh, people that they carry everywhere you go, the river will flow. Come on, dive into the river. There are waters to swim in today. We don't have to dabble around in the water. We need to dive in with all of our hearts. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, you see, when the Spirit of God is flowing out of your life, how many know it will manifest an authority of the Holy Ghost that no devil in hell will be ever able to stop today. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Come on, friend, that river flowing out of your life today. It'll make the lame to walk. It'll make the blind to see. It'll open prison doors and set the captives free. Oh, come on, if you want that river to flow out of you, let's stand on our feet together. Let's lift up our hands towards heaven and receive the life-giving flow of God's Spirit today. Oh, filling you today to overflowing. Come on, the river of God is full of water today. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, come on, let's ask God. Oh, Lord, let that river run in me. Let that river flow in me. Let out of my belly, God, flow those rivers of living water. Let them flow today in me. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I want it to flow in me today. I want the living water of God. I want the anointing to flow in me today. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. Let that river flow, Lord. Oh, let that river flow, mighty God. Let that river flow in me today, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, you don't want us to settle for just stale water. Oh, God, but you want us to have a river of life flowing out of us. You want to have out of our belly a life flowing, a life-giving anointing, a life-giving power flowing out of our lives, flowing in us and through us, bringing life wherever we go. Oh, bringing healing, setting people free through the river of God that's flowing in us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let that river of God flow in us today. Oh, Lord, I want that river of life to flow in me, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name. Oh, come on, let's sing that song that we sang in the very beginning today. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Oh, hallelujah.
Come on, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, come on, let's lift up our hands today and say, Lord, I want a fresh, I want a just a fresh in feeling today. The word says, be being filled with the Spirit. Come on, ask the Lord right now for a fresh in feeling of the Spirit of God today. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, fill us afresh, Lord. Oh, God, we don't want the stale. We want the fresh living water that's flowing out of us like a river, oh God. Oh, Lord, not just a stream. We want a river of life flowing out of us, God. Oh, we want a river of your life flowing out of us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Hallelujah. Lord, let your river flow. Let your river flow in us today. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for that river today. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, in Jeremiah, God said to the people, his people, he said, my people have committed two evils. He said, first of all, they've forsaken me, the fountain of living water or the river of living water, and they've hewn out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. If, if anybody's been raised in a farm or you know about cisterns, cistern water is always stale water. God's saying to his people, don't settle for that which is stale. Hunger for the fresh living water. Hunger for the river of, of God. Hunger for the river of God. You know, one day when I, when I had read that, again, it was rem reminded to me one morning. This has been, I, I think, probably two years ago, maybe longer than that that I was in the sanctuary and I was praying and I opened my Bible and I opened my Bible to that scripture and psalm and it said the river of God is full of water and I told the folks who were here a couple folks were praying this was like at 6 in the morning and I said God says there's a river of God flowing in this place come on I want it to become a place of broad rivers you know how it becomes a place of broad rivers is when all of us together that river of life is flowing out of us when we become that tabernacle where the river of God is flowing out from and we go out we become the broad rivers hallelujah we become that place of broad rivers flowing out into this city flowing out oh bringing life to the city of spring Texas bringing healing bringing restoration, bringing salvation. Come on, how many want that today? I want that, oh God, I want that so desperately. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on, one more time. Can we just lift up our worship to him and praise to him? Come on, let's thank him today that the river of God is full of water. Oh, let's thank him today that we don't have to settle for stale water. Oh, but we can be refreshed in the river of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we give you all the praise for it today. Hallelujah. Let that river flow, oh, God. Let that river flow in this house, oh, mighty God. Let it flow in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory to your name, Lord. Let the river flow, God. Let the river flow. Lord Jesus, let it flow right now. Oh, God, that anointing, let it flow. Let it flow in our lives this morning, Lord. Oh, thank you for that river of life, God, that is flowing out of us. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory to your name, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you today. Lord, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for today for the revelation of your word. And Lord, I just pray, God, that as we just, Lord, have received that and we just allow that to work in our hearts, oh God, we let your word, God, we're washed in that word. And today, I pray, God, as we have looked into your word, oh God. I pray, Lord, that you will just wash us in that word. God, an even greater revelation, Lord, and an understanding that we are the tabernacle. Oh, where the Spirit of God dwells. Oh, thank you, Lord. When we walk out of this place, Lord, 
It'll be a whole group, oh, Lord, of the tabernacles going out with the river of life flowing in them. Oh, God, I just pray, Lord, oh, when we walk, oh, God, in the grocery store, we're a tabernacle where there's a river of life flowing out of us. Oh, God, when we go to in our neighborhoods or wherever we may go, God, wherever we go, the river flows. Wherever we go, the river, God of life, will flow out of us. Oh, Lord, let it be so today. Let it be so in us. Thank you, Lord, today for your word. Thank you, God, for the work that you are doing, oh, God, in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the work, God, that you're working through us and you're working through family life. Oh, God, and I just pray as I've been praying, God, that we would become a place of broad rivers in Spring, Texas, I pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, give God praise for his word today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word today.